Hey guys, Guy Level here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a banner design using a picture of yourself and Photoshop. Okay, so the goal here is pretty simple. Take a picture of yourself, bring it into Photoshop, and then create some sort of banner design to showcase your colors in your social media. And once the banner is done, I will also have the PSD file available to download for free. But please do keep in mind, this is not a step-by-step -step tutorial. This is not a brand new beginner level tutorial at all. I'm hoping that you have little notions with Photoshop and taking pictures and, and computers in general. <laughs> The goal here is to showcase a certain creative workflow so that you get to thinking like a, a content creator. <laughs> All right, step one, take a picture of yourself. I shouldn't have to tell you that, but you can use your phone to take a picture of yourself. You can use your webcam to take a picture of yourself. Um, I'm using a DSLR right now. I could, I could just literally take a screenshot of this video as a photo, okay? But when it comes to lighting in this specific case and this specific banner design that I want to make, I'm going to be using this DIY Elgato key light that I made. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I definitely recommend you go check it out. It cost me 13 bucks to make. And one thing that I said in that video is that if you have multiple lights, it would be uh, better because if you put it on the side, then the other side is going to be completely dark. We're going to take a picture with one side completely dark, actually, <laughs> to make it a more stylized thing. So I'm going to lower the exposure on my camera. I'm going to turn off every other light and we're going to take a picture with one light on the side and one side of my face completely dark. <sighs> OK, so this is kind of like dramatic lighting. This is why I say having it off to the side with a one light, unless you want dramatic light, this is not necessarily suitable for for good live streaming lights. OK, OK, so the reason why I have it away like that is so that it can um, really, really hit all the side of my hoodie. If you're using a webcam, you would go in your settings and lower the exposure until you have something that you're satisfied with. Uh, if you're worried about quality, if you're using an old phone or whatever, one thing you can do is use um, the back camera. OK, you, it's going to take you a couple of tries, but use the back camera so you have a better quality. And I'm going to see what it looks like with, if I have my phone's flashlight on. It's probably the harshest light you can possibly get. As you can see, it's not great, but you can get results with it or bump up the exposure in that case. Of course, I recommend you play around with lighting. Just place it wherever you want, wherever feels cool to you. Then you'll see the results. <coughs> now it's time to take a look at the pictures that we actually took. OK, so that's the deal. Oh, my skin looks horrible. <laughs> that's what happens when you have harsh light. OK, we got that one. OK. I think I'm going to use one of these. I don't know. With the hoodie, it looks more epic in a way. Uh, this is with the phone. I actually like that. It's not too bad with the phone. It's not great lighting. Definitely not. But it works, you know. So let's open up Photoshop. We're using a CC 2020 here. And uh, let's create new. I don't really know which um, size I actually want to use. Let's actually go with 10, 1080 for now. Depending on the platform you're making the banner for, I would go with, with whatever that is. Here, I'm just going to eyeball something. And let's say that the banner is going to be something like this. OK, usually I would have a larger format so that I know it's going to be adaptable to every other platform. But YouTube, for example, asks you for a pretty large banner. So I would probably start with YouTube if you have a YouTube channel. And uh, let's go ahead and import our image. So it's that one. Now, since I'm using a DSLR, I am using a raw format. That means I will get more freedom when it comes to the highlights and stuff like that. So I can open it in camera raw before I actually import it. OK, I won't spend too much time here. We're going to wash all of that out anyways. So from here, what I'm going to do is uh, place this. I'm going to keep it as a smart. I should keep it as a smart object. I don't know if I'm going to keep it as a smart object, but let's lower the opacity just so we can see our little banner size thing uh, here. Let's go ahead and because I do want the face and a part of the chest to be part of the banner. OK, we centered it. Let me flip it. I think that's good. Press OK. So that's not too bad. We can bring it up slightly. All right. So this is where color scheme comes into place. Hopefully you already have a logo or something. So hopefully at this point, the color scheme is going to be obvious to you, right? Right. Right now, we're going to go with main color and then black. And then if you want some highlights, you can put it whatever color you want. But for now, we're going to go like red and black, for example. And I'm going to duplicate that rectangle and I'm going to bring 
whatever red color that I actually want. I'm going to try to keep this at the middle and I'm going to double click on it here and have my red. There's going to be gradients and stuff, but right now, so with that kind of red, okay, I'm going to duplicate this. There's multiple ways because I actually want um, the whole picture. Well, first of all, I want the picture to be black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and create a adjustment layer. It's always when I'm recording that every truck in the, the area decide to come here. What did I say? Yeah, I was going to create a, an adjustment layer. So click on adjustment layers here and go to let's go to black and white, actually. And I'm going to create a I'm going to hold alt on my keyboard to create a clipping mask between the adjustment layer and the picture. That way it's only affecting the picture, right? Let me zoom that in a little bit. Yeah, that's that's great. Actually, that's not that's not too bad. And from there, you can play around with the values. For example, you can decide which colors are darker than others. You can make it play around with the contrast here. Now, there's multiple ways of adding red here because I want this whole thing to be red. I can add a photo filter adjustment layer, for example, uh, pick the color that I want, like this one. Boom. Uh, it's not letting me pick the color. I don't know why. Because I have the mask selected. Okay, click. <laughs> Make sure that make sure that the mask is not selected. Uh, click on this and then boom. There you go. OK, wow, I got super confused for a second here. So that's the filter. Create clipping mask. Don't preserve luminosity. OK, as you can see, you can add it like that or you can create a new layer. Uh, go to the paint bucket tool. Uh, make sure you select this. Hold alt for the color picker and then just fill it with that. And now you can play around with the adjustment layers to see which one fits best I actually get a preview by hovering over it that's cool i only recently updated my photoshop so i'm still getting used to some of uh some of it overall it doesn't seem too bad because it actually preserves some of the luminosity the the highlights but the ultimate goal is to have uh black be black the dark end seems to do the trick so from here what we can do is actually play around even more with you know either the black and white filter you know, to decide what gets affected or, uh, but you can also add like a levels adjustment or a curves adjustment, whatever you like. If I want to bump up the highlights, for example, and really wash them out like that, that is also possible, but I'm going to keep it. Pro I'm probably going to keep it dark just so we can have that detail in the face, right? So it doesn't look like a cartoon or anything. Here's where I want to separate. I want to add that photo, well, that photo thing to the clipping mask, holding alt. And this is what we have so far. And now I'm actually going to turn off all of those so I can cut it out. I cut myself out. I'm going to click. Uh, what is that object selection tool? I've never tested out that before. Oh my God, Photoshop, that works pretty well. <laughs> wow, that's I'm guessing I can hold alt, uh, hold shift to add more to it. OK, uh, I can go to select and go to select and mask. What is that? Oh, that's yeah, that is exactly what I'm looking for uh, in the view here. I'm going to put multiple ones just to see what it looks like. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to play around with the values until I get something that I like a smart radius. It doesn't matter because that whole part is supposed to be completely dark. We're going to get rid of that that whole part anyway. So let's click OK. And we're actually going to create a mask here. So mask it out. Boom. Uh, I might go back with the brush tool. Go back with a brush tool here and then play around with the values. This is a mask, so black and white, you know, uh, white reveals, back hides. Uh, press X to switch between foreground color and background color. That's make sure your opacity is 100%. That's OK for now, right? OK, let's go here and turn everything back on by one okay that's actually pretty decent one last adjustment layer i'm gonna add is to get that left side to be way way darker and let's do that with a curves actually okay just to help it blend in a little bit and i'm gonna select the mask i'm gonna invert it i'm gonna go with my gradient tool here all right make sure that i have uh dark basically i'm gonna from the point that I drag and the point that I drop, it's going to be a gradient between pure black and total transparency. So here I just need to go and do this. OK, until it gets to the face and that didn't work because my whole mask is black. Uh, I need to do the opposite of that. 
So the darkness is coming from the white, which is revealing the gradient. Okay. <laughs> uh, radial gradient. I want a linear gradient. There we go. Okay, cool. If you're moving the picture, remember that that gradient is kind of linked to the picture. So move both at the same time. Press V to select your moving tool. All right. That is not bad. That is pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, now that the main idea of the whole thing is kind of done, you just have to kind of populate it. So if you want to add some text, for example, I already have my own logo, but if you want to write your own logo, you would, um, you know what, let me actually type it. I'm going to type my name instead of putting my logo so that when that becomes a template, it's going to be easier for you to modify it. I'm going to use very common fonts so that you don't have to download any fonts to use this. Time to mess around with whatever shapes we have just to give this a little bit more details. We're going to add some gradients. You can go on a free stock photo image website and download a grungy texture and just apply it with the blending mode. Um, I'm going to try some stuff out. Okay, so I just added a bunch of random plus. I'm going to merge them all together. I'm going to rasterize them and duplicate that. When they get gradually bigger, I'm going to go to filter, uh, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to gradually add some blur. And I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to press M on my keyboard, select the masking tool. It's a rectangle mask. And I'm going to select this side and I'm going to press I should separate them. I'm going to press control shift J to just separate that side from the other side. So here I have this part and then I can add that there individual. So on that right side, I'm going to press control I to invert the color. So it's going to go from white to black. And I kind of like that. Okay, let's continue playing around with everything really. <laughs> This is the part where you're supposed to add uh, social media. So let's go ahead and do that. So technically you can download those images from Google images. Uh, I advise you download them and keep them in a folder. So every time you have to use them, well, they'll, they will be there. So if you're placing social media icons, place them in order of importance. My main channel is YouTube. So I'm going to have YouTube first, then I'm going to have Twitch and I'm going to have Twitter and then Instagram. Again, depending on the platform you're going to be using, please check out the, the size of the banner first before you do any of that really, so that you make sure that nothing is getting cut. I'm actually going to do something. I'm going to add two of them in the back and two of them up front, but I feel like the red is going to be more visible. Anything that I put on the red is going to be more visible. So I'm going to have YouTube, Twitch, and then Twitter, Instagram is going to be behind me. Okay, let's add some text. This is so dirty. I'm going to have to clean it up if I'm going to make it available to you guys. Okay, we can add some finishing touches by just slightly going over the whole thing. Either you can, if you want to make it easy, just download a grungy texture, as I said. But we're going to play around with a with brushes and just lightly tap it with um, dark, white, and red brushes. Oh my God. Okay, I believe we have our banner. I believe this is this would be the typical size, so I'm gonna resize the the name here just to make it fit a little bit better. Okay, something I can do if I want to 
if I want this to be like extra, I could have the eyes actually be white. But of course, don't overdo it because it will draw the attention away from your face. I like that. Okay, so I'm gonna create a copy of this because I'm satisfied with what I'm seeing here. I'm gonna create a copy with that being transparent just in case I mess up. I, I create a lot of duplicates just in case I mess up. Turn that off. And then I'm going to, to create a mask around the banner size that we have here and then group up everything pretty much. Okay, and then create a mask. Boom like that here's our banner now if we want to duplicate this and maybe merge it we can do the graphic designers easy button and just blow it up for that one i want to use a lens blur so unnecessary but it gives you that extra realistic blur you know oh, okay the blur finally applied jesus that took so long all right and then you turn it down a little bit boom then you got that you can even go crazy and maybe add a outer glow okay so this would be the part where you would go on google and look up whatever social media you want and the banner size and then play around with it if you test it it doesn't work you can always come back so 1500 by 500 let's open up a new project and uh, honestly, you can just go here, control A, control shift C to copy everything that's visible within the selection and then control V. Then you just place it up until it matches. Like right here, you can see the formatting is not great, great, but the advantage that we have here is that some of it is going to end up being cropped anyways on Twitter. That is, uh, let's go ahead and find that picture again. So if I turn the opacity on that. What? <laughs> what did I perfectly what what that is perfect but um the only issue here is that my social media is not that visible uh, since my profile picture so if I wanted to absolutely have this on Twitter I would just move the social media on top of the text on top of the main text and it would be visible I don't really care if that bottom part of the text is not visible because you can still read get level Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the PSD so that you are able to um, modify it yourself. Okay, so there it is. The PSD is completely cleaned up. Technically, all you have to do is come in here in the picture folder. I put it in red so that you wouldn't miss it. Uh, replace the picture. Of course, you're going to have to create your mask. Okay, you put the, your picture here and then just make sure the clipping mask remember you hold alt in between the layers and all of the the layers up top will um affect your image to give you that look if you don't want the eyes to show up you can just turn on this thing but if this is not turned on the eyes will show up what else it's hard to really make a template out of something that is so um custom you know of course, the text, you can come here, change everything. And then social media, there's all the text too. Good luck. I showed you how to make it from scratch. Technically, you shouldn't have any issues uh, remaking it from scratch. So if you get the tem template, it's only easier. I'm not going to be using this design. So technically for now, uh, it's an original design. Uh, of course, all of you that's going to use the exact template will, will have the same design pretty much depending on how you change it. But what I can do is that since it's a single color overlay for now, not overlay, banner, I can just add one adjustment layer to make your lives so, so much easier. And it's going to be a hue and saturation. Remember those? Just change the hue. And it will match everything, every color that you want. Putting that perp, perp. <laughs> Whatever your main color is, this should help you out a lot. Anyways, I've shown you how to make it. I've shown you how to adapt it to whatever size you want to adapt it to. And let's save it. Okay, so the link will be in the description for the PSD file if you want to download it. Really, I just showed you how to make it from scratch. You 
shouldn't need it but yeah let me know what you think about that kind of project like doing templates like that or making it available or just showing you the step by step not really step by step but the creative process of making things like that i'm trying to dive more and more into all of those different things and tips and techniques that you need to know in order to be a real full-time content creator you know you gotta pick up photoshop at some point and and start doing your stuff i know other free software you know what i mean but yeah, sometimes you need to sit down and make your own banner. <laughs> Anyways, follow me on social media. Twitter is where I announce everything that I'm doing. If I'm working on a new project, if I want feedback from the community, if I want people to participate on the next episode of Live Streamers Answer, it's going to be happening on Twitter. It's where I announce why I'm going live also. On Twitch, I do a show called Stream Review every Friday, 8 p.m. CST. That's Paris time. You guys just have to come in in time, join the queue, and then I will go ahead and look at your stream and give you advice if need be. But I'll give you my first impressions on your stream. Quite interesting. My Instagram stories, I show all my DIYs and all the current projects that I'm working in, or if I'm going out, you know, normal Instagram stuff. But if you are looking for some dope overlays, panels, profile pictures, and all of that, to make your stream look good, I definitely recommend you going to gumroad.com slash level. This is where I keep them. A lot of them are free and the rest is just very, very, very affordable. That's the goal. If you don't have a huge amount of money to pay like for a custom work yet, gumroad.com slash level is the place to go to get your stream looking professional already. And also depending on the type of template that I'll be doing in the future, I might start putting them up on Gumroad as well. If this video was interesting, uh, leave a thumbs up. As usual, subscribe, ring that bell, and I will see you guys next time. I've been recording for two hours and 26 minutes. It is currently 2 a.m., 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> but I will see you guys next time. Go out there, make me proud. Guy level, out.